This is me, Spoon Beast. Alright, people. Hi. Um, I'm here to give my review of WWE's Royal Rumble 2010 pay-per-view. Happened Sunday night. I'm giving my review Tuesday because, well, one reason I was too tired Sunday night to actually make the video. And then last night, I actually wanted to make a different video, and nobody watched it anyway, so I guess I shouldn't have even made it. I should have just made this one. Anyway, I'm going to give my thoughts of the pay-per-view. Um... So, let's get right to it. We started off the night with Christian taking on Ezekiel Jackson, defending his ECW title in the process. This match was better than I thought it was going to be, that, but that didn't mean it was great by any stretch of the means. Um, it was just kind of okay, I guess. I, I, I don't really know what to say about it. It was just kind of an okay match. It entertained me. Christian was able to pull off a good match with Big Zeke. Well, okay match at that. Uh, I gave it... Two and a quarter stars. Nothing really special, but a decent opener. It was better than expected. And then we got the impromptu match of the night with The Miz defending the U.S. title against MVP. Again, this match was... I don't know why I was added to the card. Somebody, If anybody knows that, please comment. But it was just really quick, and it was just kind of okay. Again, just another okay match. I gave it two stars. And then after that... We got uh, the WWE title match. Sheamus defended against Randy Orton. This match was meh. Again, you know, it was Sheamus and Orton. It was kind of boring at parts. Um, it, I didn't. I wouldn't think it really picked up speed at all. It was just not really the greatest of matches. I just kind of found it okay. Uh, I gave it two and three quarter stars. You know, Sheamus retained by disqualification. Whatever. You know, and in the other two matches, Miz retained his United States title and Christian retained his ECW title. Yeah, but you see, uh, just pretty average matches on this. And then we got the dud of the night, which was the women's title match. It was basically just a segment more than a match. I was actually expecting, you know, a competitive match between the two. But basically, it was just a squash with Mickey quickly going over Michelle McCool. Uh, in a squash-like victory, I, just a dud. The, the overall segment was okay. I liked the pre-match video package they played. So as a segment, it was it was pretty okay for a segment, I guess. What else can you say? I gave the match itself a dud because it was a dud. It was just a simple squash. Um, and then we got um, Undertaker defending his World Heavyweight title against Rey Mysterio. This match was pretty okay. It was actually pretty good. The, it was kind of quick, though, kind of short. And it was just, uh, there was just something missing to it, in my opinion. Like, I, I got into some parts of it, but um, in the majority of the match, I was just kind of like, mm. So, overall, I gave it three stars. I thought it was pretty enjoyable, but overall, like, it was a pretty quick match. And there just seemed to be something missing from it. I don't know what it was, uh, but there was just something missing from that match to get me more involved, pretty much. And then we had the Royal Rumble match itself. Now... Keep in mind that this Royal Rumble was booked very weird. I did not like the booking of this Royal Rumble. Uh, there was like there was too many quick eliminations. People would just go in and then get thrown out. It was just kind of not booked very well. It was booked very weird, and that kind of ruined it for me, to be completely honest. Uh, CM Punk was great when he entered. I thought they would keep him in for a while, but then Triple H came out and tossed him out. That kind of pissed me off. But... Uh, at least Triple H did get eliminated by Shawn Michaels. I did not see that coming, and when it did happen, I should have just I stood up and clapped. I was like, "Woohoo! No more Triple H in the matchup." And then the HBK went on to go to the final four. You know, yeah. Uh, eventually, it was just Cena, Michaels, and Jericho that were in the ring. And then the twenty ninth entry came out. It was Edge, who made his return to action. Had I known he was medically cleared to wrestle, I would have made him my Rumble winner, but I didn't. And then Edge came down to the ring, eliminated Jericho, then Batista came out, eliminated Michaels, and then we got down to Batista, Cena, and Edge, and then Cena eliminated Batista, then Edge eliminated Cena, and Edge won. Um, but yeah, that was pretty much the only part I liked was when Edge got in there. Before that, there were some other kind of good parts before that. Punk at the beginning was just amazing. I, I could have watched that for another at least five, ten minutes. That was just gold. And uh, But, of course, Triple H had to ruin the fun. But, overall, this uh, Royal Rumble match just 
it was booked way too weird to be enjoyable. It was inferior to last year's. Last year's was way better, in my opinion. Uh, I'll give this Royal Rumble match three and a half stars. Like, really, there's not much for me to talk about. Like, it just was booked weird, and I just did not like how they handled some of the stuff in the Royal Rumble. But it was still enjoyable to watch. It was still the Rumble. And it was still cool to see who'd come out after, the, you know, the 10 seconds. It always had that, you know, that big-time feel because it's the Rumble. But, like, other than that, uh, I just was not very... It just did not seem as good as last year's. It was not booked as well as last year's, and the match itself just did not flow as good. There was not a single time in this Royal Rumble where the ring would fill up and they had to slowly eliminate superstar still to tone down in people that were in the ring. It was just quick elimination after quick elimination. Some people stayed in longer than others, but other than that, usually in the Royal Rumble match, by the time you have your 30 entry come out, you still have a ring full of superstars. That wasn't the case here. By the time the Batista came out at number 30, there was only three people left in the ring. By the time he got in there, there was only the final four already. So it just... This, the booking decisions just were not that were not that well thought out for this year's Royal Rumble. Overall, I give the show 6.75. Wasn't really the greatest of Rumbles, as you can obviously tell. Uh, the undercard was not that good, and the Rumble itself, in my opinion, could have been booked a hell of a lot better than it was. So yeah, there's my review. Um, check out some other videos whenever I have time to upload them, and uh, I'll see you all later. Peace out.